Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan East. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, I have me some tea. You probably just saw me in a recent video because it's the same day that I'm recording this video. I recorded two videos on the same day. Why not? But, um, we're here to do my December book haul, and I don't have quite that many books. I did, however get a massive amount of secular books so if you guys are interested in like the other books that i have gotten just click the on the screen to go to that channel um and check that book haul out but this month of december i didn't get a lot for um christian biblical fiction there just wasn't a lot that i was interested in and a lot of the review books that they contacted me about i didn't care for so um i actually do have two books sitting over here that i actually need to show you guys um here they are so i have two four six Christian fiction type of books. I have two nonfiction and then one Bible. So I'll show you guys the Bible first because I did get this in the video I just recorded from my sis over at Colton Beauty and Books. But she gifted me the Everyday Life Bibles Bible from Joyce Meyer. It is in the Amplified Translation. And I entered her giveaway in one. So this was a Bible she sent me and I love it so much and I can't wait to dive in. So we got this beauty here. Once I get used to this book, this book, this Bible, I will do a sort of first impressions and um, review of it to share with you guys because I really just want to, I just want to dive in so bad. So we have that. Then we go into my Christian nonfiction. And again, like I said, I only got two items. The first one is this on the go devotional, 200 devotions for teens. I got myself a copy because I did end up purchasing one for my sister and my brother for us to do as like our yearly kind of like sibling kind of study because i do bible studies with my son my sister and my brother separately but um i wanted to do something that i can study with them together so i have this one here and we'll probably do this on saturdays um because i do bible studies with my son on tuesday and then wednesday and thursday i do studies with my sister and brother individually um so yeah we have this and this is from bh publishing um, and it says, on the go and in the word, life gets busy and sometimes that means a teen's devotional time is limited. That's where the on the go devotional can help. These 200 short devotions focus on 20 topics for teens. Readers will find daily scriptures, to the point devotions, suggestions for deeper Bible reading, and action points. All in a compact size that will help keep teens in the word even while on the go. So, um, they're really short. Literally, literally like, really short. Um, and it's not like a dated one, so it's 200 devotions in here, so that's great for 200 days. Um, so pretty much half, most of the year. Um, and some of the topics include humility, which is like the first thing that they talk about, which I think is phenomenal. God's love for us, joy, faith, forgiveness, how we love God, um, worship, heart, the mind, the soul, hope, um, friends, prayer, I'm just flipping through to get to the different topics that they have family church testimonies which i think is a good one salvation they talk about holiness anything else freedom and worry so yeah they talk about those different things and i thought this was a great one for me to have for myself so i got one for my sister and brother as well but this is the first one a devotional so quick and easy and um yeah all right, so the next one I got is honestly pretty, almost like pretty much a cover by, but it's also a practical one that I got. But um, it's called From and Before God by Sugal Michelin. Probably saying his name wrong and I apologize if I'm butchering it. But it's a practical introduction to expository preaching. And if you guys don't know, I did give um, two sermons already, the sermonettes rather. And um, I don't know, the Lord has been giving me different ideas to write sermons and I haven't been writing them and the ones that I did start I kind of stopped writing them and I already know that I'm going to do a lot of speaking engagements outside of my ministry the Lord has showed me that and I've been asked to go back to the church that I recently preached at as well as to speak at a youth conference um so you know the Lord is working on me and I want to find my preaching style I want to find ways to work and craft my sermon um so i grabbed this book because it looked interesting i already have two other books i don't know if i have them over here yeah i have two other books on preaching and expository preaching and sermon writing and stuff like that so i thought this would be another one to add to my collection hopefully i enjoy it hopefully it's not just geared towards men because you already know i have feelings about one of the books that i'm reading that's geared specifically towards men but whatever I digress. Um, but the back of this says, imagine this scene. You are standing in the pulpit of your church preaching on a Sunday morning. Without your knowledge, the Lord Jesus himself is sitting in the last row. 
listening attentively to what you're saying, how would this reality impact your preaching? The truth is that this is no mere illustration. The Lord is present in his churches every Sunday, listening to the preaching of his word. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 2.17 that ministers are to preach as from God and before God. Those who preach God's word are commissioned by God to preach the word and they do their preaching before God for an audience of one. This, according to the author's name, can't pronounce that, is the biblical foundation for expository preaching. Preaching that draws out what is in the word of God. In this work, he regarded as one of the best preachers in the Spanish-speaking churches make makes a biblical case for expository preaching and models for readers how to prepare and preach as from and before God. So, um, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a good read, so I decided to request it for review, but that is that. Okay, so moving on to my other books. But before I dive into that, I did get two packages in the mail. Yes, so I got this little envelope here from Miss Tessa Afshar because I'm a part of her launch team for Daughter of Rome. So I'm like so excited. But um, I cut it open. I never opened it. So I've had this sitting for a while. Um, so we're going to dive dive in. Um, I don't I like I know what's in here, but I don't know what's in here. I know bookmarks are in here, but <gasps> Ooh, I'm just pulling things out. Oh my God. Okay. Is that it? All right. Let's move this out the way. So. I got a leather bookmark um and it says be still and know that i am god psalm 46 and 10 let me take it out of the packaging but this is so nice it's a nice leather bookmark with little tassels on it so that's nice i probably won't ever use it honestly it'll just sit in the case <laughs> but i got that okay yes i got some bookmarks of um daughter of rome so that is awesome i'm definitely gonna keep one for myself obviously but um, this is the bookmark for it. So it talks about the book. And it has her information and her other books on the back. So that's awesome. So I have some to give away. One I'm keeping for myself. So I'm going to stick those over there. I got a book plate. Ah! This one is a book plate with her signature on it. Which is awesome. So I'm putting this in my book when I get it. Then I got a sticker sheet from... Um, me and, my big idea, me and my big ideas, the happy planner, if you guys know what that is. But um, she sent, I guess, everyone a sheet of stickers, and I got this one, which I'm here for. We know I'm a planner girl all day, every day. So we have a sheet of stickers from that. And then I got a card, which is so... This is such a pretty card, you guys. Oh my gosh. And she wrote in the card. So that is awesome. I know I love me some Tessa Abshaw. So this is awesome. Oh my god. Okay. So that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much Tessa Abshaw. You're probably not going to watch this video. But thank you anyways for that. And I can't wait to get my copy in the mail of the book. So can't wait. But um, also before I get into the other books. I did receive this Delilah box. So um, you guys should have already seen the unboxing of this video. Fingers crossed I have the unboxing up before here. But inside I received some books as well from um, the subscription box. So if you want to see what was in the subscription box, just click the I above. But I'm taking these books out because they're a part of um, the book haul. <laughs> so I do have two more nonfiction books. Um, so the first one is When Jesus Was a Green-Eyed Brunette by Max Davis. And it's Loving People Like God Does. This is Christian nonfiction. Don't know anything about this author. Don't know anything about this book. I mentioned that in my unboxing, but it sounds good. So I'm going to quickly read the back. It says... Those hurting and weary from worn-out religion are longing for a fresh touch from the living Jesus. Best-selling author Max Davis challenges us to do more than simply receive God's grace. We need to allow grace to soften, change, and shape us. As you read this book, you will laugh, cry, and come face-to-face -face with the living Jesus, much like Davis did when he found him living in a green-eyed brunette. As David puts it, Jesus is very much alive today and still does incredible things, sometimes supernatural things, through us. So, um, yeah, that sounds pretty darn good, and I can't wait to give this one a go. The next one is one I was, like, super, super excited about. Like I said, if you haven't seen the unboxing, just click the honest screen, because I was, like, soaked for this. <laughs> I've been wanting this book and the other one so long. I think there's three of these books. Um, let me just look. I think there's three of them, though. Yeah, there's three of her books. Liz Curtis Higgs, if y'all know who she is, I enjoy her. She writes um, Christian fiction, Christian historical fiction, and she also writes Christian nonfiction. I've only read one of her Christian nonfiction books, 
um, and I'm currently reading the second one, but I own three of her books. Um, and this is one of the books that I really, really wanted. I'm all about learning about the women of God, but I'm also interested in learning about the um, unpopular or lesser known women of God. And that's what the Delilah box is about. It's about learning more of about the women of God that are not well known. And so this is Really Bad Girls of the Bible, More Lessons from Less Than Perfect Women by Liz Curtis Higgs. And yes, so she has Bad Girls of the Bible. Um, I'm trying to look it up now, which I'm still going to get my hands on. So yeah, she has Bad Girls of the Bible um, and Slightly Bad Girls of the Bible. The books that I own from her are The Women of Christmas, I think it is. Or the, no, The Women of Easter is what I own. I want to get The Women of Christmas, though. But um, yeah, so this one goes through eight different women. She goes through The Bleeding Woman, um, Tamar the Widow, Herodias, which I've heard about her. That's the woman that asked her husband to kill somebody. Can't remember who it was. Um, it goes through Bathsheba. There's another one named Athalia. Don't know who she is. The Adulteress, Jael, which I know who Jael is because she's in the Book of Judges around the time of Deborah. And then the Medium of Endor, which I've never heard about that. But, um, yeah, she goes through eight different women. And I'm excited to, like, read this book so bad. I can't wait. And I really just desperately need to see. I need to check thrift books and see if they have the other two books on that site because I really want them, like, really bad. And I do have a gift card that I was gifted um, for books. So I might get those books but um yeah i'm excited for this so we have this okay so following up i then have my christian biblical fiction books actually let me separate this into a pile so i have four christian fictions and three biblical fiction so the first one is also from that delilah book box that i talked about um and it's king's shadows king's shadow by angela hunt is book four in the silent years series right yeah silent years and this one is about um king herod's court so basically she wrote biblical fiction all about the silent years i think between the old testament and the new testament um when god was silent and didn't speak um so yeah i own all of these books already in this uh series so i have a copy to give away i'm debating on giving it to one of my sisters in church because she's really interested in reading more biblical fiction so i'm thinking about giving her this copy though i also have um i think i have the first one egypt sister as well to give away so i don't know I'm debating, but I own this copy already, so, but this was in that book box. I'm just including it in the haul. Then, from my sis over at Quilton Beauty and Books, Stephanie, she sent me Paul, Apostle of Christ by Angela Hunt. I, I mentioned this in the unboxing for the giveaway that I won from her. I have a love-hate relationship with Angela Hunt. Um, I own pretty much all of her books, um, but I've only read two, and the two that I did read, I gave four stars. Um, not saying that that's bad, but I wonder, like, I'm wondering if i can ever give her books a five star like there are a lot of books that i love from tessa like have five stars books from me to andrew i given three of her books five star and the one other one i read a four star so i'm just interested maybe it's her writing style i don't know um but i'm interested to read this is about paul um so yeah we have that all right and then i went to my local library of course my library is always selling books they have their annual book sales in october and i believe in march but they always also sell books as well throughout the year they have like this cart in the library where they just throw books up there and they're 25 cents 50 cents and a dollar and i picked this one up this was the only biblical fiction and i got it because i had bought the other one which is right here i had purchased zipporah before from them during their october book sale and this is book two in the um what is it called the canaan trilogy this one is on Zipporah, the wife of Moses. So when I saw this one, had to have it. And it's Sarah um, by Merrick Halter. And this is book one in the Canaan trilogy. You guys can see this. That's Canaan. Um, you know, I don't mind if they're used. It doesn't bother me, but I'm excited to read this. This one is obviously about Sarah, the wife of Abraham. So yeah, I think the third one is called Lila, if I'm not mistaken. But we have it now. So now I have the first two to read in this trilogy. And I might just pick up the third one just because, but um, we have it. Next, we have all of the Christian fiction novels that I received. So, the first two are actually, actually, all three of these are reviews. So, <laughs> the first three books I'm going to show you guys are review books. So, this first one is contemporary fiction um, with a little bit of, like, suspense to it from what I remember. But, um, it's called The Way of Brave by Susan May Warren. I have her book, Knox, and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Bad, I know. But, um, I'm going to read Knox first, which is like a cowboy romance um, and then I'm going to read this one. But this is the first one in the Global Search and Rescue. Rescue? Yeah. Book one in the Global Search and Rescue, which I do have to read and review for the month of January. Oh, But, um, yeah. So, on the back, it says, Haunted by the memory of a rescue gone wrong, former para-rescuer jumper, excuse me, former para-rescue jumper or 
Orion Star has no desire to join Hamilton Jones's elite rescue team, but he also can't shirk his duty when the call comes in to rescue three lost climbers on Denali in Alaska. Jenny Calhoun's yearly extreme challenge with her best friends is her only escape from her guilt. The former CIA profiler and psychiatrist greenlighted an operation against the Taliban that ended in an ambush and lives lost. When her carthotic climb on the Denali turns deadly, she'll be forced to trust her life to the most dangerous of heroes, the man she nearly killed. Orion and Jenny will have to put their wounds behind them to save their friends and their hearts. So it sounds like it's going to be good. I'm hopeful to give this a 3.5 star, at least minimum 3.5 star, like hopefully um but yeah we have it so i'm gonna read this for review for january the next one i have is another one i have to read for january yeah um and it's by lynette eason this is book one in the danger never sleeps and it's called collateral damage this is romantic suspense and this deals with the fbi no it does not deal with the fbi but i'm gonna read the back of you back for you because i'm terrible so it says they thought they left the fight behind on the battlefield but their greatest struggles are just beginning Honorably discharged from the army after an explosion nearly killed her, former military psychiatrist Brooke Adams has set up shop to help others, but her days of helping military personnel are over. She's got her own battles to fight from her time overseas, and she's not equipped to take on more. Former Army Special Ops Sergeant First Class <laughs> Asher James could handle anything that war sent his way. The only thing that scares him now is sleep, as the shadows close and the nightmares begin. Finally convinced that he needs help, Asher makes an appointment with the counselor. When he arrives at her office, she isn't there, but a dead body is. When it becomes clear that Brooke was the real target of the attack and that her secrets go even deeper than his own, Asher vows to protect her no matter what. So I'm interested to see how this author will incorporate some faith aspects in this and God included in this. Um, but it sounds like it's going to be epic. No lie. I'm hoping this will be a four-star. Like, I have high hopes to at least get this a four-star rating fingers crossed it sounds epic sounds like something that would um be gripping like in a movie form so we have it we gonna hope that it's good okay the next one is also romantic suspense and it's by rachel dylan and it's called end games it's the first book in capital intrigue um don't know if this is going to be a trilogy don't know anything about this book i was sent an email about it and i said cool i requested it. it sounds like something i want to read because i'm trying to like i said get into more suspense novels and i'm finding that i can start off with christian fiction suspense novels so it's romantic suspense i need romance in all of my books i don't care if it's it, my fantasy novels have to have romance romance is a need for me <laughs> but um i'm gonna read the back for you guys so it says each new clue every crime scene brings them closer to discovering the end game when elite members of the military are murdered on the streets of washington dc oh i'm sorry you guys i didn't even read the back of this book like i said i just saw the email requested so i yeah um fbi special agent bailey ryan and ncis special agent marco augustino augustino augustini i i don't know augustini i'm gonna say augustini <laughs> must work together to bring the perpetrator to justice unfortunately all evidence points to a navy seal sniper who bailey refuses to believe is guilty Ooh, that's why you can't mess with people in the army sometimes sometimes he mans i don't know um but when Bailey and Marco start to connect the dots between the victims, they wonder if there's a deeper cover-up at play. After Bailey is targeted, it becomes clear that someone is willing to kill to keep their dark secrets. With the stakes getting higher by the moment, Bailey and Marco rush against the clock to determine who they can really trust in this twisted conspiracy. As allies turn to enemies, the biggest secret yet to be uncovered could be the end of them all. It sounds interesting, and I'm here for the NCIS, like anything with the BAU anything with NCISC I love those type of shows I like watching Blue Buds I love Criminal Minds I love NCIS the actual show I love Law and Order SVU I love SVU SUV SVU excuse me and I love Law and Order so I like those kind of shows so I'm interested to see how they play it off in this um if you guys don't know I'll be reading Mind Games this um month not this month next month with my sis um Stephanie will be reading that and it's a romantic suspense that deals with the BAU so I'm like super stoked and have high hopes for that so we have this which it sounds like it's going to be epic so hopefully it's good the last book I have for you guys is one that my sis again sent me she sent me two she sent me two fictional novels and a bible um this one is fragments of fear by Carrie Stewart Parks and this is going to be suspense again I don't know nothing about this book so I'm gonna read it back because I don't know so it says Evelyn McTavish's world came crashing down with the suicide of her fiancé. Oh, that's so sad. 
As she struggles to put her life back together and make a living from her art, she receives a call that her dog is about to be destroyed at the pound, except she doesn't own a dog. The shelter is adamant that the microchip embedded in the canine with her name and address makes it hers. Evelyn recognizes the dog as one owned by archaeologist excuse me, John and Coyote because she was commissioned to draw the two of them. The simple solution is to return the dog to his owner, but she arrives only to discover John's murdered body. As Evelyn herself becomes a target, she crosses paths with the undercover FBI agent Sora Price. The more he gets to know her, the more personally invested he becomes in keeping her safe. Together, they're desperate to find the links between so many pieces, and the clock is ticking. So, I've never heard of this author. It's a new-to-me author, so I'm excited to dive in. And because my sis sent this to me, I'm probably going to read this book in February. Because my TBR for January is a little crazy. And y'all, y'all, mm, my, my January TBR is insane. But yeah, we have this book. So, those are all the books. I'm excited about each and every book that I received, each and every book that I purchased, each and every book that was sent to me for review. Um, I'm like stoked. I think of all of these books, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm excited the most for this. Like, this and the Bible. This it. That's it. If I had to pick, like, a non a Christian fiction? I don't I don't really know. I mean collateral damage sounds good as well, so maybe that one. But that is it for this video. If you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe and if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.